Hi listeners, the following episode of Building a Business Podcast with Scobie Boo will be broken down into two parts because these guys can't stop talking and we got our conversations carried away. So I decided to break them into two parts uh, so that you guys won't get too uh, bored listening to us talk as well. Uh, the part one will begin right after this and part two will be aired a month from now. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Building a Business Podcast. This is a show where we embark on an adventure with entrepreneurs across various industries, picking their brains and hearts on what it's like starting, building, maintaining, and growing a small business. Building a Business Podcast is supported by Patreon patrons like you. Go to patreon.com slash building a business and help us better from as low as one US dollars a month. My name is Sean. This week, we are back with Wan Ching, Jen Yang, and Nicholas from Scobie Boo. I'm sorry, I always Hi. get stuck <laughs> with the names. <laughs> How's everyone? Right. It's so easy to pronounce, Sean. I know, but like sometimes I interview so many people, I talk to so many people, right? It, I'm so afraid I get it wrong that I always get stuck somewhere. Like, am I getting this right? Uh, Who are these guys? I don't uh, want to say okay, the wrong thought... company. Not nice. Okay, okay. I thought oh, you... then that would be really bad. But you can cut out <laughs> like, the magic of podcasts. Yeah, the magic of podcasts. We can always cut. Yeah. And most we start your, you know, your starting only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And a little bit more enthusiasm and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, you guys heard of Clubhouse and all mm. these other versions, variations of Clubhouse that were coming out, right? In the past months. Okay. So if in case you don't know, right? So that's Clubhouse, right? Facebook is coming up with theirs, okay. which is Audio Room or something mm. like that. Then Spotify just came mm. up with their, their version, which is Green, wait, Green mm. green something, Green Room, Green yeah. Room, yeah. Mm. Twitter mm. is coming with their own. Everybody has their own. So, and a lot of people have been asking me, why don't I bring our podcast into Clubhouse and its variations? And do you think that is something you guys want to do? Like go live and have a bunch of people listen. I, I don't know if there will be anybody listening to us. Maybe it's just four of us talking and maybe a few of our friends who will listen just for the sake of it. Oh, okay. Um, um, I don't know. I haven't gone live. live. With Clubhouse yes. recently. That, that, that would be actually live, right? Yes, that'll be live. You know, mm. you know, I've like, after anything, after TikTok, I don't know already. Although I've seen Clubhouse, <laughs> Greenhouse, whatever. <laughs> you know, the Spotify is doing this like room where everyone shares music. I think that's what you're saying. Yes, 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 yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I read the headlines and I was like, okay. Mm, mm. I don't know what is it. I don't have that many friends to use it with. Okay. Okay, so what is essentially is it's just like having a live video. Like for example, what we're doing now here, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of videos, it's just audio and it's just uh-huh. the four of us speaking and there will be people who will attend, people from anywhere who just come in and listen and listen and listen and they can raise mm-hmm. their hands and be brought up to stage and give their points. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. Yeah, so it's actually quite interesting. But of course, the downside of it is I can't record and repurpose the content. So that is... <laughs> I want to be able to repurpose my content and put it, you know, archive it somewhere at least. Can you, can you do like a screen recording? Um, the last time I tried, Clubhouse issued me a warning to say that if you are caught screen recording, you can be banned. I don't know if the policy has changed since then. Oh, wow. Yeah, because wow. Clubhouse prides itself at being a non-recording <clears throat> type of live format where people can share things knowing that uh... it they can't be held accountable or whatever. Whatever it is, lah. Those kind of Won't stuff. Won't be used again. Yeah, it can't be used against them. Uh, yeah, uh, in a court of law. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So mm. yeah, so that's that's something that I've been I've been uh, thinking about as well. And you guys are the actually the first group of people who I'm taking building a business podcast with, um, this far. And I think I've reached a point where I need to start getting creative with the content as well already. Mm-hmm. So okay. yeah. so this is the first episode where we are going from checking up on what you guys are doing into a new format which is dream a little dream i think i like that name okay i want to i want to burst out into a song please don't life is a musical (laughs) yeah we can start dancing as well so before we start with that one uh shall we just update on what's going on uh in the past month first just a quick one if there's nothing much 
Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, just kidding. Basically, basically, what we have been busy. Actually, we have been busy prior to our previous month. So meaning two months before. So we have mm-hmm. been brewing enough. Because there was this one period where you know stocks were low and then we could not fulfill most of the order. So after that, that one month of pretty uh, tight brewing schedule. Um, mm. So the past month we were always you know we we have stocks. Uh, so we weren't brewing. So technically we were a bit more relaxed. Mm. I don't know whether that relaxed part made it feel like uh, <laughs> like no effort was put into Scooby Woo. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think I I realized this um you know weird um situation where you know when the thing when MCO happened right everything just goes low. Yeah, <laughs> there's no inquiry. <laughs> you know, even we post right. You remember we post a few um posts yeah. on social media and then there's zero zero inquiry about it. You know, even from our <laughs> mm-hmm. even from our. Um, you know, return customers. So they usually they will ask. You know, from our friends, from um, mm. friends, friend, from launching friends. So I don't know about you guys, but from my side, you know, so far I only have two customer, two yeah. customer. I you know. I have one lot, which is my cousin lot, but that's about it. Yeah. Recent lot, recent. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what happened. You know, like um, um does MCO affect their their spending? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't know. Style. I, I realized that during MCO, maybe more people are more inclined to like you know cook at home, prepare food at home. So they mm-hmm. are. I, I'm not sure because I'm the one that, uh, if MCO happens, I would order, but I see mm-hmm. a lot of people starting to cook more. So in that sense, because yeah. our content now is about food preparation, mm. with um kombucha like as part of the recipe, then yeah. wouldn't that shouldn't that be in the right context? You know. I'm not sure whether we there's always this like uh this 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 debate not uh, this discussion in my mind whether um we did it a bit too early or not because um right now I'm also managing like a new brand that's entering Malaysia right and they are now reversing back into education stage instead of like penetrating through distribution level because they realize right there's a lot of um competitors coming in especially. Nestle, right, or all these like big, big players, right? They can press price down, and without proper education or proper branding, right, people would just go for whatever is already branded and priced low. So mm-hmm. yeah, for for my brand that I'm managing right now, right, they are literally just today. I got a briefing, and they say, um, we're gonna U-turn. We're gonna stop with all those price discount and go with education. Like what sets this product. Uh, what differs this product from, let's say, whatever Nestle is holding up. So Dude. I'm not sure whether when we were doing something that is a bit more non-educational in our product sense, right, whether we are taking it one step ahead before people actually know properly what we're doing, even though we've posted, because the reason why we went for that is we posted a lot of um, shots with the bottles and then we feel like it's becoming a bit um, repetitive and stagnant. Mm-hmm. So that was the that was the part where we decided, oh, why don't we do something else? And now looking back, maybe, I don't know. It's like, I cannot judge whether it's too early to do an, uh, a slightly more uh, adventurous move or, you know, or we should just stick back to. Because what we, okay. what we post, right, I think we have this bias of, of it feeling repetitive because we are doing it. But for the audience, right, it might not be that way, you know. Yes. So, yeah, so that is that. That is actually very true. Um, your own bias because you see too much mm. of it and you think everybody else is seeing a lot of it as well. But in fact, on social media, people have yeah. a very short attention span and they don't remember things very well. Correct. Uh, there is actually mm. one thing that I that I quite recently noticed. Of course, it, it came and went very fast, but it caught my attention. There is this, I think it's a fizzy soda called Vida. Okay. Oh, okay. Right, okay, and there was this, bottles, yeah. Right. They have a few. They have a few different flavors, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. There was this very short moment of time when my social media was filled with people, just talking about them buying a, a crate of that, and just taking a picture of it, showing a picture of them holding that drink. It's not a promotion. It's nothing at all. It's just that. It's just it's just there, 
and it caught my attention and I've never heard of this brand before, never seen it before. Mm-hmm. Maybe I've heard of it somewhere, but it, it was not so prominent to me until that time. And then it was gone. So that, that got me thinking that there is, there could be something that I'm looking at here, which is like, if you get enough people to just show one photo a day or one photo a week mm. of them, they don't have to promote it, don't have to talk about it. It's mm. just there. Enough. Mm. That's mm. it. Then they will ask, hey, where did you get this from? Mm. So that I think it's help. like this. I think it's like the same way that's um Influence. some brands are doing it, like um they send products like like influencers seeding, but very aggressive. Yes, but what I don't like about the aggressive influencers method is that they are very aggressive. They can't <laughs> they can't wait to talk about it and they write about it as if it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, but, but how mm-hmm. they yeah. never used it before and they don't like it and they really hate yeah. it and you know, and they will never use it again. But this has nothing to do with that. It's not, they're not selling it. They're not describing it. They're not giving out a promo code. It's just a very simple photo of it. I think that caught my attention. The subtlety of it. Okay. So I think that, that was... Could be a better approach, you know, compared to influencers, you know, like this is more, something more personal where you see your friends is enjoying or, or you know, having it. And then you, that makes mm. you think like, Hmm, what is this and make you curious so when yeah. when influencers do it it's like okay they are doing another you know sales pitch or they are starting to yeah. say something so that doesn't attract me at all you know? yeah and it doesn't feel as if you're trying too hard or you're being very desperate mm. yeah okay but influencers do work on certain brands like I feel like um when let's say again I bring in Nestle because recently I get targeted by their ads too much <laughs> <laughs> it's like Let's say Nestle hires um, an influencer to just shout out their ice cream, right? If you follow an influencer. Yeah, it does work for brand recall because I mm. think we are already associated with the brand already and we know what the brand is doing. So that is just like, a, hey, don't forget us. But I think for us, or let's say for some of the brands that are you know, growing, right? Uh, using influencers too much does make it feel disingenuine like, in, in a yeah. whole. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Like Studio, you were saying? Oh, I didn't put any name out there. <laughs> okay, I, I think I got to cut this off. <laughs> Let's defamation that. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one more, Sean. Um, Gaston Luger. Oh, yeah, the bag, yes. Holy shit, these two... Oh, my God. Am yeah, I supposed to cast? That's okay. Very it's going to be cut off. <laughs> yeah, this, these two brands, right, they are only specifically targeting, like, micro-influencers or, yes. like, super yeah. micro-influencers yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, they are targeting... I think the new term is nano influencers, right? Oh, smaller is than it? Micro. There's a smaller one than micro. Yeah. So it's uh below five thousand or between three to eight thousand time below ten thousand. Mm. Yeah, the nano influencers. Yes. Wow. So they say that because these are more uh genuine engagement, and uh, yeah. the reach is better. And these people don't ask for a lot of stuff. They just want the bag, and that's it. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. So it's a lot mm-hmm. cheaper for them to manage. Yeah. Or so, you can just send product to them and they'll have to advertise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can just sell a product. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I think coming back to your point, um, Sean, although we want to create more presence, um, I think what we struggle is with uh with content, like the consistency of us posting, because we don't we always feel like every post has to has to has a certain information, it has mm. to have have a certain intention. Mm. It needs to come. Uh, it needs to have a message that comes across, and you know, it's like a chicken and egg kind of situation. Do we post them or do we not post them? And then <clears> by not posting, then you know, you don't get the, um, to to have a stronger presence, um, mm. and we don't want to be posting um, junk information or, mm. or mm. I don't know. Um, well, just um, there are a lot of kinds of about it. there are a lot of kinds of information. In uh, that you can use for social media. The only question is, what are you okay with or comfortable with? Like, for example, you can post something about this, saying that we are having a conversation now to, to you know, talk about stuff. And that, that, is, that is a content. And whether or not it is a content that is worthy of your standard is another thing. Social media cannot be too uh, curated, too cult and too perfect. To be mm, human and okay. to be rough creates the connection between you and um, uh, you and the audience. So then 
I say this to a lot of business people. This, uh, I say that the best way to connect to your audience is to show your face and tell them who you are instead of to hide behind the brand. Because that way, they, they will know you as a person and the trust will be higher because they know you now instead of just a brand. So Let me make notes. <laughs> <laughs> You remember we were talking about asking Wan Ching to, you know, hold, hold the bottles and, <laughs> and flex his muscles. That's between my boobs, right? That sells, you know. <laughs> that sells. That sells. Right, so, right, right. You know, sex does sell. Make a, I don't make want a note. to be always in sex sells. I think, I think at a certain point in time, maybe, maybe you know, we want it to be an auto running business and we don't want every time we want to run a business we're going to hire like new models and say hey hold this bottle for us <laughs> or we'll, we'll... or you can or you can do this you can do like an outline of the bottle in shadow just one line like a single light casting and then an outline of a person's butt or something and it's just there just <laughs> like my side <laughs> <laughs> why, why are we talking about this again? <laughs> well, no, we'll be the first kombucha brand on um, on OnlyFans. Oh, isn't that isn't that yeah. innovation? So you have you have all all the OnlyFans uh um stars, yeah, stars who are there, all the artists and stars, and they will have a bottle of kombucha of your kombucha in the corner. Just as oh, a wow. <laughs> oh wow. That's a positioning, right? Yeah. That That's a sexy drink now. Yeah. Literally. We will send you an invitation as our, you know, OnlyFans guest, Sean. <laughs> oh, wait. Me being a guest, that means you already have an account, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. How <laughs> I don't know why my life in the dark. <laughs> nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> wait, wait, so, so do we cut this out or do we leave this in? It's I'm okay. okay really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, hold up. Face. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if there's nothing else on the updates, let's jump into mm. this um, dream a little dream section of our mm. show. Dream so, a little dream of me. <laughs> okay. That needs so, to be cut out. <laughs> you need to be cut out. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right. So, I send you guys three questions. And these questions are about kind of like an imaginative thing. So imagine if this were to happen, what would you have done differently? Imagine if that were to happen, what would you have done differently? So it allows us to daydream a little bit to go beyond where we are now in, in terms of our company and our business and all that. And assume that maybe if this were to happen, then, you know, what would we be doing? So the first one is that uh, what are the things you wish you had known before coming into this business? So what are the things you wish you had known before coming into this business? Mm. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, you start first. Let me brainstorm a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I wish um, to know how much people know about kombucha. Like, you know, the acceptance level of this product, of this, you know, particular kombucha thing. Uh... <laughs> You know, till now, right, I still got questions from my close friends like, you know, what is kombucha? <laughs> I thought we did enough uh, on the educational part, but, you know, they just don't read and they don't Google about it. They just ask like, what is kombucha? So that, that leave me uh, uh, a lot of questions like, <laughs> you know, is it better if we come in later or not? <laughs> Or, you know, when there's more, when the market is more ready, you know, when there's more people know about, you know, what is kombucha about. So it is easier for us to penetrate mm. to the people okay. to sell it to them. You know, like, I, I um, think, I think if that was the case, right, um, mm. I think that in that time, there would be a lot of competitor and it's harder for you to separate out from the already well-established brands in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Like imagine a business doing three, four years, let's say 10 years already, and that's in the market matures, and then we enter at the mature stage, um, I think it's harder to attract customers then because everyone will be so used to, let's say, brand A or brand B. Mm. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Th but think of it as that we need to have a lot of patience in educating the, the people right now. So... Mm. Patient, patient, not patient, patient. You need to have a lot of patience to educate people now. And 
I found it. You know, Fantastic. education is very expensive. Oh wow! <laughs> education is very that. very difficult to do. You know, especially when you wanna give people the knowledge about something. You know, and you know, it's always difficult, lah. I don't yeah. find it. It's not easy. I completely get you guys. <laughs> yeah. No, I completely get you guys because, um, the when when I started. Virtual Palace marketing, social media and digital marketing was one of those marketing things that nobody wants to do. It's a very scrappy underground kind of stuff. And big companies would still want to use the traditional media. Um, MNCs were not even in social media yet at that point, not even in digital marketing yet at that point. How many years ago was that? I think what, uh, five, six, wow. five or so six years ago? It's quite recent. Yeah, it's, uh, in Malaysia especially. And we were lucky because this thing got got shot ahead because of COVID. If it wasn't for COVID, there are so many people who still refuse to go into digital marketing. And the big companies are in and they are coming in with a lot of big bucks. And when they come in with big bucks, right, because Mm. the auction price is so high now, smaller players cannot even compete already at this point. So they have got nowhere to stand. And now with all this Apple's app transparency thing that is taking away a lot of uh, uh, tracking, ads will become more and more expensive as well. So that was difficult. And another difficult one is actually podcasting for me as well, because I came in with podcasting, I think three to four years ago. Mm -hmm. And only recently, people in Malaysia, more people in Malaysia start to understand what podcasting actually is. People Mm -hmm. always ask me questions like, why is your podcast video so boring? uh? Why no, no, no words and, you know, fancy, fancy stuff. And I said, podcast is about audio. The reason why I'm putting a video there is just because nobody listens to podcasts in Malaysia. So I just put a video there so they can see my face. At least I can sell a little bit, you know. <laughs> That's a lot of confidence. <laughs> I think, I think Sean, one change, you too, right? <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's the, the kind of stuff that I would say. So. Okay, so someone understands. All right, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I completely understand from, yes. from your perspective. Yeah, also, mm-hmm. like you see, um, when people don't find the relation to it, right? Just say your product is, is online marketing and our product is kombucha. So when people don't find relation to it, right? There's so limited way that you can push mm. it to them. This is my, my, mm. my, my perspective, mm. you know, like, um, mm. like the energy drink, the, 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 the brand that you mentioned just now. V soda. Oh, Vida. Soda. Yeah, Vida. Vida. yeah, so probably you aga aga sort of know what is it about, but mm. when this thing you know presented to you, you want to know what is you want to know more, so you will you know it will spark the interest, lah. But for kombucha, you know, I find that people here they are you know they have no clue about it, they don't know what is it about, so yeah, you know, kind of difficult. I, I think okay. for Malaysia's market, right? Um, maybe they are still quite new to the whole health health Everything. revolution kind of thing mm, uh. mm, mm. like mm. you know plant-based meat just entered um, yeah. organic food is literally not selling because of the price yeah. you know, everyone is you know still still buying things that are cheap not cheap but affordable uh, because of yeah. our purchasing power in general mm. yeah. still buying things are, off the shelf yeah. um, mm. packaged stuff non-healthy stuff yeah mm. that's true but if we come back to your question Imagine like what what we would wish uh, we would have known before starting it. If we were to know that the um, market is not mature, then that would have already been a barrier for us to, to commit to starting it. So I think, I don't think, um, I think I really enjoy the process of this whole um, understanding this whole market is not mature and that we kind of have to brainstorm and, you know, we, we kind of have to fight uh, fight the waves of it and now that we're here you know it mm-hmm. um it's sort of like uh we've already committed to a point where we kind of want to educate more yeah, and break mm-hmm. and break the waves um i i feel like it's it's um yeah it's an enjoyable journey mm-hmm. and um if we would have known that you know the mature is impenetrable then then probably would be that we would have had a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. So I think the action is going to bring on to further action. And um, mm. 
you know, we, we may be the pioneers. Well, not not, not really, because there's already some really big uh, kombucha brand mm-hmm. in the market. But, um, you know, we're finding different angles and we're still considered uh, one of the earlier um, ones to ride the waves. That's all for this week's episode of Building a Business Podcast. Building a Business Podcast is supported by Patreon patrons like you. From as low as one US dollars a month, you can help transform building a business podcast into a source of inspiration and lessons for all entrepreneurs and small business owners all of, all over the world. To support, go to patreon.com slash building a business. If you do not wish to provide monetary contribution, simply like and drop a review on your podcast feeder to increase its visibility and hopefully the show will reach someone who will also find value in our content. Our podcast is available on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Spotify and more. We post full videos on YouTube and clips on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Thank you very much. And catch up with the people at Scobie Boo again next month for part two of this two-part series. Mm-hmm.